operation of plants and machinery in industrial chemical and related processes, chemical process engineers. And then there's the development of new or adapted substances for products ranging from food and beverages to cosmetics to cleaners to pharmaceutical ingredients, among many other products known as chemical product engineers. Entomology. In 1996, a British journal for the history of science article cites James F. Donnelly for mentioning an 1839 reference to chemical engineering in relation to production of sulfuric acid. In the same paper, however, George E. Davis, an English consult, a consultant, was credited for having coined the term. The History of Science in the United States, an encyclopedia puts this at around 1890. Chemical engineering describes the use of mechanical equipment in the chemical industry became common vocabulary in England after 1850. By 1910, the profession chemical engineer was already in common use in Britain and the United States. History. Chemical engineering emerged upon the development of unit operations, a fundamental concept of the discipline chemical engineering. Most authors agree that Davis invented unit operations, if not substantially developed it. He gave a series of lectures on unit operations at Manchester Technical School in 1887, considered to be one of the earliest such about chemical engineering. Three years before Davis' lecture, Henry Edward Armstrong taught a degree course in chemical engineering at the city of Guilds of London Institute. Armstrong's course failed simply because its graduates were not especially attractive to employers. Employers at the time would rather have hired chemists and mechanical engineers. Courses in chemical engineering offered by Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States Owens College in Manchester, England, and University College, London, suffered under similar circumstances. Starting from 1888, Lewis M. Norton taught at MIT the first chemical engineering course in the United States. Norton's course was contemporary, contemporaneous and essentially similar with Armstrong's course. Both courses, however, simply merged chemistry and engineering subjects. Its practitioners had difficulty convincing engineers that they were engineers and chemists that they were not simply chemists. Unit operations was introduced into the course by William Alts Walker in 1905. By the early 1920s, unit operations became an important aspect of chemical engineering at MIT and other U.S. universities, as well as at Imperial College London. The American Institute of Chemical Engineers, AKI, established in 1908, played a key role in making chemical engineering considered an independent science and unit operations central to chemical engineering. For instance, it defined chemical engineering to be a science of itself, the basis of which is unit operations in a 1922 report, and with which principle it has stat published a list of academic institutions which offered satisfactory chemical engineering courses. Meanwhile, promoting chemical engineering as a distinct science in Britain led to the establishment of the Institution of Chemical Engineers in 1922. Ikemi, likewise, helped make it unit operations considered essential to the discipline. New concepts and innovations. By, 19, by the 1940s, it became clear that unit operations alone was insufficient in developing chemical reactors. While the predominance of unit operations in chemical engineering courses in Britain and the United States continued until the 1960s, transport phenomena started to experience greater focus. 
Recycling unspent reactants and controlling energy transfer. 
such as nitration and oxidation, involve the conversion of material by biochemical, thermochemical, and other means. Chemical engineers responsible for these are called process engineers. Process design is the most challenging field of chemical engineering. Overall, process simulation is done using various software. The recent book, Chemical Process Technology and Simulation, by Sirkuma Kyokil gives many classical examples. It is also a textbook of chemical process technology. I don't know why there's so many of those where it's like referencing one random textbook. It's almost like somebody put in their own textbook as like an ad or something. Uh, transport phenomena. Transport phenomena occur frequently in industrial problems. These include fluid dynamics and heat transfer, mass transfer, which mainly concern momentum transfer and energy transfer and transport of chemical species respectively. Basic equations for describing the three transport phenomena in the macroscopic, microscopic, and molecular levels are very similar. Thus, understanding transport phenomena requires a thorough understanding of mathematics. Applications and Practice Chemical engineers develop economic ways of using materials and energy. Chemical engineers use chemistry and engineering to turn raw materials into usable products such as medicine, petrochemicals, and plastics on a large-scale industrial setting. They are also involved in waste management and research. Both applied and research facets could make extensive use of computers. A chemical engineer may be involved in industry or university research where they are tasked in designing and performing experiments to create new and better ways of production, controlling pollution, conserving resources, and making these processes safer. They may be involved in designing and constructing plants as a project engineer. In this field, the chemical engineer uses their knowledge in selecting plant equipment and the optimum method of production to minimize costs and increase profitability. After its construction, they may help in upgrading its equipment. They may also be involved in its daily operations. Chemical engineers may be permanently employed in chemical plants to manage operations. Alternatively, they may be they serve in a consultant role, troubleshoot problems manage process changes, and otherwise assist plant operators. So that's the end of the article for today. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about my degree. Um, so, uh, I guess, that, oh, I almost forgot. So, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm uh, trying out doing a bit of a photo contest. Uh, so far, there's only been one person partaking um, who sent me a picture. Um, and what I'm looking for is just a picture of a place near where you live. Um, and it's just, you know, kind of like a spring picture. Or if you're in the southern hemisphere, a winter picture, a fall picture, I guess. Um, and so I just like to see where, what it looks like. That's it.